Okay, welcome back to the book of Exodus. We are in 34, and today verses 21 and 26, here as we carry on in our study. You shall work six days, but on the seventh day you shall rest, even during plowing time and harvest you shall rest. You shall celebrate the Feast of Weeks, that is, the first fruits of the wheat harvest, and the Feast of Ingathering at the turn of the year. Three times a year all your males are to appear before the Lord God, the God of Israel. For I will drive out nations before you and enlarge your borders, and no man shall covet your land when you go up three times a year to appear before the Lord your God. You shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leavened bread, nor is the sacrifice of the feast of the Passover to be left over until morning. You shall bring the very first of the first fruits of your soil into the house of the Lord your God. You shall not boil a young goat in its mother's milk. All right, let's just pause there. And here we have several directives carrying on as we're uh, working our way through. Did you notice, uh, let's see, it starts with an S. What would it be? The Sabbath. The Sabbath comes back. Here's yet another reference to the Sabbath. And what we're seeing here is that here's a specificity here, even during harvest time. And you're plowing, you're harvesting, and there's an excuse there, well, we've got to break the Sabbath because, look, it's harvest time. Well, the scripture says, no, you don't do that, period. God says, no, that's out. You've got to be faithful uh, to the Sabbath law. And then we have these other items as well, the Feast of Weeks, uh, three times a year, there's this promise you have, when they go to the big feast that, that God will protect things when they're away. Anyway, what you really have here is a lot of direction that says what? God is reminding, be I've, my directions to you are very specific. My directions to you are rather precise. And so you observe those, those things that I've asked you to do. So no, you're not going to slide when it's plowing. You're not going to slide when it's harvest. You're going to just keep the Sabbath just like normal. You're going to continue to keep these different feasts that we've talked about just like normal. And so, yeah, there you have it, the details. When God gives us specific business, we go by the specific business. When God leaves it general, he's allowing us, he's giving us leeway. Like, for example, in a church we have the communion service. How often do you do the communion service? Some churches do it every week. Some churches do it once a year. Some do it every uh, three or four months. Uh, it's actually the fact, biblically, is that that is not specified. Jesus says, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. So we're not given a time, uh, an absolute time. If you did it once a year and then everybody missed it, that so several people missed it that day, it would be so few. But if you did it every week, it might become almost common to you. So we practice doing it about every four times a year usually. Uh, so we're trying to keep, keep it in the right place. Uh, but we're not specified. Here we see some things that are very specific, and so we want to hold on to those things. Things that are more general, we'll treat those as having been given to us, granted to us, directing us, and yet in a more general sense. So here we have uh, these different directions here. In gathering three times a year, uh, God's promise, he will drive out the nations in front of them, and we have... Uh, this, it's interesting, too, on the, uh, the none of this, the, the, the stuff left over till morning. Uh, where is it there? Verse 25. You shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leavened bread, nor is the sacrifice of the feast of Passover to be left over until morning. Well, we already studied about the Passover back in, in the directions given in Exodus chapter 12 there. It was not to be left over till morning. This is just reiterating the same thing. So where, what can we deem or draw from this? God's directions, when they're very precise, we go by the very precise thing he's given. When they're more general, he is giving us more space for interpretation. So he's giving us more space for difference in practice. Anyway, God is quite precise. He's able to communicate. He's an extremely effective communicator. Trouble is, we're not such effective listeners or obeyers sometimes. But anyway, and so we'll leave it there and come back for some more tomorrow morning. Thank you for joining me today in the book of Exodus. Thank you.